welcome back students again in continuation with the online class series and now we are going to talk about in the previous video we have talked about uh, the outbreeding devices as well as the uh, what to say artificial hybridization technique now today we are going to talk uh, in this video we are going to talk about the uh, pollen pistol interaction So, when we are talking about the pollen pistol interaction, it is a type of a dialogue which is set up between the pollen grains they are, that are shed off on the stigma as well as the stigma itself. It is a type of a chemical dialogue. that is established between the pollen grains shed off onto the stigma as well as the stigma itself so what happens as we all know that uh, uh, whenever the pollen grains they are shed off and in a previous uh, pre video we have studied up that the pollen grains either they are shed off at the two cell stage or they are shed off at the three cell stage in those uh, pollen grains which are shed off at the two cell stage then after reaching the stigma of the pistil they again undergo division and the uh, generative cell undergoes division and it produces two male gametes that is again it acquires a three cell uh, stage after reaching up to the three cell stage only the pollen grain is able to fertilize the pistil that is it is able to produce the pollen tube but what happens prior to that we are going to study that when the pollen grains they reach or they arrive the stigma a large number of the pollen grains as we have already studied that there are various agencies like when water and various biotic agencies which help in the act of pollination that is the transfer of the pollen grains from the flower to the stigma of another flower that is there are uh, chances of pollen grains of other species also to reach up to the stigma of different species so in certain cases in such cases what happens that the stigma it is capable of identifying that whether the pollen grains they belong to the same species or not if they do belong to the uh, other species then the pollen tube formation is not allowed but if the po uh, pollen grains are of the same species then the pollen tube formation is allowed and the further events of fertilization takes place but this type of interaction that is uh, what to say identification whether the pollen grains are of the same species or not is said to be the pollen pistil interaction and it is dependent upon certain type of the chemicals that are present both in the stigma as well as in the pollen tubes the interaction between these two um, between the chemicals of the stigma and the pollen grains that is known as the pollen pistil interaction and it sets up the dialogue between both of them and helps in the identification of the pollen grains leading further to the formation of the pollen tube which further eventually reach up to the rear end at the micropylar end where the synergids and the egg cell are present and uh, uh, the pollen tube it gets its pathway directed by the synergids into the ovule the process right from the uh, shedding up of the pollen grain at the two cell stage or the three cell stage up to the uh, pollen tube formation uh, up to the rear end or the micropylar end entering the ovule is said to be the pollen pistil interaction. So 
this is all about what is pollen pistol interaction and how is it useful in identification of the pollen grains. Now we are going to talk about the double fertilization events. So these are the pollen grains, this is the stigma, this is the style, this is the ovary, these are the antipodals or the antipodal cells you can call them, this is the central cell, these are the polar nuclei. Then this is the axle or the view. These are the two synergids which eventually form the uh, what to say uh, egg apparatus. So now what happens? Now uh, after pollination, the pollen grains they have been shed off on through the stigma and uh, of the matured. But still, now what happens, these pollen grains, they, have, they are even mature, that is they have attained the three-celled stage. Now, a dialogue will be set up between the pollen grains as well as the stigma, that is identification of whether the pollen grains are of the same species or not is taking place, that is the pollen pistol interaction has taken place and if they are of the same species, then only those pollen grains which are of the same species, they are allowed to produce the pollen tube. So there are quite number of chances that a number of pollen grains of the same species are present onto the stigma but a uh, large number of them they are going to produce of course the pollen after pollen pistol interaction has taken place a large number of them they are going to produce the pollen tubes but the pollen tubes they are not going to proceed further on that is they are not going to reach up to the rear end that is the micropylar end only one of the pollen grain it is able to produce the pollen tube which is going to reach up to the micropylar end where the egg cell or the ovule is present. Now after the formation of the pollen tube what happens the uh, what transfer of the male gametes takes place. For, uh, uh, the, gen uh, the generative cells as we all know it possesses two cells. Now the first male gamete it is going to travel through the uh, pollen tube and it is going to come to the rear end where the uh, uh, where the pollen tube it is entering into the ovule through the uh, synergids guided by the filiform apparatus and then it is going to reach up to the egg cell and it is going to fuse up with the egg cell and here the first fertilization event takes place first fertilization which is the actual fertilization event and which leads into the formation of the embryo proper.
then what happens there is another cell left behind this again second male gamete it uh, travels to the hole of the pathway of the pollen tube and then it reaches up and it enters into the central cell and then it fuses up with the two polar nuclei this type of uh, what to say fertilization is said to be the triple fusion which leads to the formation of the triploid nucleus since and since fertilization event has taken place twice over year once with the egg cell and another with the two polar nuclei such type of uh, fertilization events they are said to be the double fertilization events and hence it is a characteristic property of all the angiospermic plants when i am saying that it is a characteristic property of all the angiospermic plants that means it holds a great significance in the angiospermic plants that is the as i said you all that the first fertilization event it is going to form the embryo proper then the second fertilization events which uh, is known as a triple fusion and which leads to the formation of the triploid nucleus this triploid nucleus it is going to form what is known as endosperm the formation of the endosperm is very very necessary since and since this endosperm it is very much uh, uh, responsible for providing nutrition to the developing embryo so here it is going to form uh, endosperm which is going to provide nutrition to the developing embryo then other things that are going to happen after fertilization that is all these things uh, that is the stigma and the pollen tubes they are all going to uh, dry out and they are going to uh, be removed after certain time and what will happen that is the ovary wall it is going to form the fruit wall the ovule it is going to form the seed itself and the axle it is going to form the embryo proper hence a complete fruit it is going to be formed as a resultant of fertilization events so now in our next class we are going to um, uh, study the post fertilization events hence we have completed the fertilization events in this video now we are going to move ahead with the post fertilization events thank you